I'm Mr. Grinler. And I'm Mrs. Grinler. And, and this is Grinler's Creatures. And welcome back to another episode of Grindler's Creatures. But on today's episode, we're doing some more ants. So I got in contact with Ants HQ some time back. Got a big old package of a, a couple different species of ants inside, as you guys would have seen. If you haven't, make sure you go back, check that out, because it was an absolutely amazing box. But for today, and I'm excited about this, because, well, I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. But we are doing the H. Venator ants. So Harp Harpaganathus, I think it is. Harpaganathus Venator. And these ants, if you guys don't know what they are, well, you're about to find out because they are absolutely incredible. And it's probably one of my most favorite ant species at the minute, at the minute, because there are some more cool ones out there. Just haven't experienced them yet. So I remember seeing a, a photo that Scott's Inverts posted of the H. Venator, and oh my God, it was absolutely beautiful. So what I love most about this species is the fact that they're such a large ant. Their eyes, their eyes are incredible. Honestly, you can just stare at them for ages. Like, I'm pretty sure they can see you. I don't even know. I know they've got good eyesight, but I feel like sometimes they're looking into my cell. Then you've got their large mandibles. Absolutely crazy. They're extra long. And the fact that they go for live prey is absolutely insane. Like you chuck a little cricket in there or something, they, they literally savage them. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy. This has got to be one of my most favorite ant species at the minute. So enough talking, let's just go straight down to the table and let's have a look at the Harpaganathus Venator. But before we get into these alien looking things, I don't know, they just look a bit like aliens to me. I think it's more because of the eyes. But anyway, we're not here about the eyes. I just want to show you the enclosure before we actually get into these. And there was one in particular for this species of ants that I got told to use for it. And I must admit it was a bit of a pain peeling all of that off. But regardless, once it was all peeled, the enclosure looks absolutely gorgeous. And it is actually called, well, I can't actually pronounce it, but the Utisol One Ants Nest? Utisol Ants One Nest. Well, wherever it is. It's on the Ants HQ website. Honestly, I've used this now for a couple of months. And it seems to be doing absolutely fine. So this out world's completely different to mine because none of my others have like the little rock or the little plastic plant inside. And then you've got the chamber, and obviously this is where the H. venators are going to take all their eggs inside, or larvae, or wh whatever it is. They're going to pull it inside, and what I've found, and I'll show you a bit later on in the video, is that they kind of pull it on the mesh. And I'm assuming that's from the moisture underneath, where you put the water, so that's pretty cool if I'm honest. And then another bonus of what they put inside of the box was the test tube transfer kit. So, you know, I don't have to worry about any ants getting out if I can't put the actual test tube inside the outworld but now I've actually got the test tube easy I can put the test tube on and I can just see the ants walk out and that's what I've recorded for you guys but before we show you that part you gotta have a look at the H Venators inside the actual test tube they're absolutely beautiful but yeah they're, them alien looking eyes there I feel like they're just they're looking at me I can't help it <laughs>
and welcome to your new home. Although I will say it took about, I'd say about a week if I'm honest, for them to fully come out of the tube. So what was really frustrating and what I've found with most ant colonies, which is quite frustrating, is, you know, when you put the test tube into the actual, I still don't know what it's called. You know, the test tube kit where you put the tube on and they go through the vial, as you can see, and they go into their new enclosure. All they were doing was like walking backwards and I didn't even know ants could walk backwards. So yeah, if you didn't know, they can walk backwards because uh, we've seen it on video. But I have got one ant colony, which is still going. They're still trying to get out of the vial and that's been going on for a long time. So yeah, you might not see another ant video for quite some time. But yeah, all in all, it took about a week for them to fully come out of the test tube into the new enclosure. And while I'm talking, I just want to talk about the actual queen compared to the workers. So the queen is only slightly larger and that's because of the thorax. And you can see their sort of wounds from where they, you know, they had their wings. But that's the only way you can really tell them apart. And it's really hard once they're in their enclosure to actually find the queen because I found the queen while she was in the vial. But now that she's in the enclosure, it is very, very hard, especially with the glass. Ants like a humidity of around 70 to 80 percent, so quite high humidity. And in temperatures, probably around about 22 to 26 degrees. So with this humidity and temperature, that will give them the ability to thrive. And we all want our ants to thrive. There's nothing worse than getting an ant colony and you just see it fail. So let's have one last little look. And then I'm going to show you these ants a bit down the line because I'm going to show you them with some food. And they've also got some brood, larvae, eggs, whatever you want to call it again. But I'm really excited to show you this. So I did start these off with mealworms, although I found that all they kept doing was sort of going on the mealworm and they weren't actually, you know, killing it. And that's one thing I really like about this species is the fact that they hunt live prey, which is not something you see every day. So yeah, I tried a mealworm at first, but then I went on to crickets and uh, yeah, honestly, they go savage. So I don't think I've said it in this video, but they are primitive jumping ants. And they remind me a bit like assassin bugs, if I'm honest, the way that they, they hunt their prey. And this is one of the reasons why they're probably one of my favorite ant species at the minute. So let's have a look at some feeding footage now.
Another good thing is, I actually got some eggs, so I must be doing something right. And they've turned into larvae as well, so fingers crossed, we're going to get some new workers soon. But talking about the workers, we have had some deaths. As you can see in the outworld, it's like a, a field of just carnage. You can actually see old workers' heads. So one thing that really baffles me still is the hierarchy you get in ants. You know, they've all got different purposes. It's absolutely brilliant. But with that, you're going to get some deaths. You're going to get some that fight each other. And then you're going to get natural death at the same time because workers don't last forever. But this outworld is just absolute carnage at the minute. You can see old workers, you can see old prey. And I do need to clean it up a little bit and I do spot, you know, spot clean from time to time. I've had a couple of ants get out as well, so that's not good. But all in all, it's been some time now. And these seem to be thriving. And I can't wait to see how they do down the line. Now, will I probably get some more of these down the line? 100%. I feel like one H. Venator ant's nest is not enough. And I'd like to see how these do, you know, in separate sort of setups. So I'll probably definitely get another, you know, one or two lots of them. See how they do. And like I said on a previous video, I really do want to try a multi-queen setup of an ant species. And that's something I wanted to do for 2024. But now that they've all settled in, you know, we've had some brood, larvae, whatever you want to call it. It's now time to leave them be and just let them thrive and have a look from time to time. I do love waking up in the morning, coming down and checking on my ant colonies. It's absolutely brilliant. But I will be sure to give you an update on these down the line whether it's good or bad. Because at the end of the day, my ant keeping experience is very new and I've done some wrong things already, but I'm learning just like we all are. Just like I am with tranches still to this day. You know, I've been doing it for years and years, but I'm still learning new stuff every single day. Just remember that guys, we're all learning at the end of the day, whether it's tranchlers, mantids, you know, ants, scorpions, whatever it is, we're all learning. And we need to be patient with each other. And that is all the footage for today's episode, guys. So don't remember, if you're after some ants, go check out Ants HQ. The link will be down in the description. You know, you need to get some of these Harpagonathus Venators. They are absolutely insane, but I don't recommend them to beginners whatsoever. So, you know, just do your research on it. Hopefully this video has helped you guys a little bit. You know, if you guys wanted to get them, hopefully I've you know, made your mind up if you want them or not. But I'm excited to see, you know, even more months down the line how these do. Because, uh, yeah, I was a bit worried at first about them, the fact that they actually, you know, they came and then there was a few workers that have died. And then obviously since being inside there, a few workers have died. But at the same time, we've also had some eggs or whatever you, you want to call it for ants. I don't know what they're called with ants. I should probably search it up before I start talking about it. Either way, there's some eggs in there, so we're going to have some more workers soon enough. I'm still having trouble finding the queen, but I'll get there. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll see her and then I won't see her again for ages. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. So if you could like, comment and share, that would be absolutely great. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we upload next. Don't worry, next week will be more tarantula content. Don't forget, check down the description for a link for our link tree. It's got all our social medias on there. It'd be greatly appreciated if you go check that out. But Mr. Grinlin's done here. Mrs. Grinlin's not here because, you know, she hates ants. So I say bye on her behalf and I say bye from all our creatures here. And I will see you next week, guys. Have a great one. You all deserve it. Peace.